Cisco Firepower Threat Defense. Cisco Dynamic Attribute Connector. So Cisco Secure Dynamic Attribute Connector enables you to collect data such as networks and IP addresses from cloud providers and send it to the secure firewall so it can be used in access control rules. Due to the dynamic nature of workloads and the inevitability of an IP address overlap, customers require policy rules to be defined based on non-network constructs such as VM name or security group. And here's a, an example of it. It could be cloud or on-premise. So you have your Cisco Secure Dynamic Attribute Connector that ties into Azure and can use user-defined or global regional service tags. You've got VMware with NSX workloads and metadata. You've got APIC with endpoint groups or EPGs. You've got Identity Services Engine and Secure Group Tags. You've got custom dynamic attributes, SecureX. It can also be leveraged for workflow dynamic objects, atomic actions out of the box. You've got secure workload scopes uh, when you're looking at micro segmentation or application segmentation in the data center using inventory filters and clusters. You've got Google Cloud Platform that includes user-defined tags and Office 365 with, with Exchange, SharePoint, Skype for Business and other attributes as well. And you have AWS user-defined tags. Pretty neat. And the real cool thing here is, again, as these attributes become um, updated within Firepower, they're automatically deployed. So it's not like I have to go into Firepower Management Center or Secure Firewall Manager and push out these new changes to access control policy. I don't have to do that anymore. It's dynamic. Let's check it out. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, so bear with me here. I've got to go into access control policy and make a change to my pre-filter policy. Um, this is something that's specific to the lab that I'm working in, um, but not necessarily required if you are going to use uh, secure Cisco Secure Dynamic Attribute Connector. So we'll go ahead and deploy. We won't watch this. We'll rush right through it, and then we'll jump right into it. All right, we're connected to the Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector. Again, this could be on-premise or in the cloud. We've got a couple of connectors, AWS, Azure, and vCenter. Now, with vCenter, we've got a name. We've got the pull interval, the host, the user, the password, um, and you have a certificate that is associated. We've tested it. It's validated. AWS, very similar, uh, except that we've got an API key and once tested and validated, we're good to go. You can also see the status of your connector. All right, let's go to adapters and go Firepower Management Center. We're gonna add that as one of our adapters. We'll give it a name. We've got a description. Uh, you can put in domain. You can also include fired elements, IP, port, user, password. So we've created a user within the uh, Firepower Management platform. Go ahead and set up the password. And we need to insert the uh, certificate here. So let's go ahead and open this up. And this is the trusted CA. We're going to go ahead and copy that and paste that in. and test validated so we're good here so we've got connectivity to our connectors at least the one specifically aws and vcenter and we've got a connection to our firepower management center now we're going to go ahead and create our dynamic attribute so aws underscore engineering underscore apps and we'll go ahead and select aws and we'll build our conditions so let's go ahead and do that now what is the key? Well, more specifically, we're looking at department and we want that department to equal engineering. We'll go ahead and select OK and we can click show preview to see if we've already captured any um, 
devices that met that requirement. Remember, we're using engineering as the uh, attribute to define those assets that we're gonna use in policy. Let's go ahead and create one for VMware. So let's give it a name, VMware underscore finance underscore systems. We'll go ahead and grab vCenter and we'll build out our conditions here. So this won't be a little bit different. We're gonna actually use uh, VM name and it's gonna equal Ubuntu underscore client. So anything that's got that value associated to it, we're gonna detect and you can see we've detected an asset here, both the IPv4 and v6 address. All right, let's go to objects and object management. We're gonna to go to external attributes to dynamic objects. And we can see here we've got AWS engineering apps and VMware finance systems. So let's check out the VMware one. And we should see those two uh, IPs here, the local link local and the IPv4 address. And AWS, again, we should see two IPs here, and we do. All right, now we move into access control policy. We're going to build two policies. They're going to be pretty simple here. But remember, as systems come up and or down within um, these virtual infrastructures, they're going to automatically be associated to this policy that we're going to build and allow access to those systems if the conditions are met. So let's go ahead and name this finance systems. We're gonna move this all the way up to the top here. It's gonna be an allow policy. And we'll go to networks. And we'll go ahead and just set the IP address of one of the hosts. So 198.19.10.36. And we're going to go to VMware uh, Finance System. We're going to log at end of connection, and we're going to go ahead and add that rule. Okay, let's go ahead and add another rule here. And this time it's going to be called Engineering. Engineering Apps. And again, we're going to move it uh, below rule one. It's going to be Allow. And we'll go ahead and again, we'll hard set the IP here, 198.19.10.35. We'll go ahead and add. And we'll go to dynamic attributes, dynamic objects, and we'll grab the AWS engineering underscore apps. And then again, we'll log at end of connection and we'll go ahead and add that rule. So if those two hosts, right, speak to their specific assets, it's going to be successful here. Now I'm going to create one to block so they can't move any further down in the list here. We're going to call this HR and engineering default access rule. And we're going to block this access. It's going to be under rule number two. Block with reset. We'll go to networks and we'll just add in those two IP addresses here. And uh, we'll go to logging and we'll log at beginning of connection and we'll add that rule. All right, it looks good here. Again, if you're coming from 36, you get the VMware Finance. 35, you get the AWS Engineering. We'll go ahead and save that out, and we'll go ahead and deploy. Again, this will be a minute or so to deploy. Now, you might be saying, wait, wait a minute. Why are you deploying? I thought you said dynamic objects. You don't have to deploy. No, the first time we have to deploy, this is a brand new policy. As IPs or attributes are being defined within our cloud infrastructure, then we'll automatically update that policy based on the uh, IPs that we discover based on those attributes. All right, so let's give this a test. Now, we're coming in as um, a, a non-defined user, so we should block regardless here. Neither one of these systems should be accessible. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to 
double click uh, the Dilbert um, user and it's going to set the right IP address and we're going to come from dot 35 and in fact we would have been successful in the top ping which is the AWS resource we did successfully send the ping and the logs will show that it just never returned there was something upstream that was causing issues and I didn't troubleshoot it the other one was supposed to be blocked but let's check this out in the logs so let's go ahead and and streamline our unified events to look at NGFW1 only we'll go ahead and hit apply and from here, let's look at the allow connection and we're going to see that dot 35 tried to access that AWS resource. And in fact, it was allowed. So that ping was allowed. I, again, I didn't receive the response because something upstream was blocking the return. So no big deal. The, the analysis proves that it works. And again, this is about the dynamic um, attribute connector not so much about the accessibility of the of the resource and we can see the other one block with reset why because the dot 35 didn't hit a rule that allowed it and it met that hr and finance default block rule so let's go ahead and let's log in as harry which is an hr user and in fact he should not be able to get to aws resource that's denied but he should be able to get to the finance system and we saw that here let's look at the logs to prove this out as well let's drop down the allow and you can see it's a dot 36 IP it's allow and the access control rule was finance systems and again anytime these IPs change based on the attributes we're interested in they're automatically gonna get pushed to firepower threat defense. And here's that block with reset, trying to hit that AWS resource, not allowed, connection denied. Pretty cool and powerful capability from Cisco.